Oh, thanks, Jenny. That was so nice. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but, but before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm dialing in from, the Bendigal people of the Eora Nation, and recognize the significance of the past and their continuing connection to the land. I'd like to extend those respects to the traditional owners of the country that you're dialing in from and to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Island people that are in this meeting. Um, thank you, Jenny and our ladies for inviting me to do this workshop. I was a bit hesitant at first because as you're learning, you're like, oh, am I ready? Am I not ready? But I, I, I do, writing this workshop made me ready <laughs> to give this workshop. So I'm really glad I'm here and so many people signed up and are excited to make their own first star package. As Jenny said, I, um, I just want to preface that I'm no expert in package development. It's only been like six months and I'm still very much finding so many new challenges when it comes to package development. But I also want to say learning how to make your own package is an incredibly rewarding experience. And I hope it's something that you all want to do and continue to do after this workshop. So, um, as our users, we're familiar with loading various R packages. We just talked about our favorite ones. At its core, an R package is, you know, code and, and or data uh, that is bundled up with tests and documentation that makes it very easy to share with each other. And before we kind of jump into the heavy part of this workshop where we're making the R package, I think maybe it would be a good time for a five minute breakout discussion of why we want to create an R package in the first place. And if you don't really, and then these are some other discussion points, like what are some good attributes of an R package? And if you have an experience, any experience with making one, you know, what was it like? And, or if you have a really good idea of an R package, maybe you'd like to share with people just to break the ice and warm up a bit, because I know this is dinner time. It's struggle time for me because I'm, I'm always hungry. So I thought it'd be a good time just to chat with each other for a bit. Can I do breakout rooms? <laughs> Perhaps you can, Jenny. Oh, oh, Jenny, cool. you're on mute. Yeah, hang on a second. I think I can. Um, breakout rooms, there is an option to do that. How many, how many do you want? We have uh, 36 people. Let's say six per group. Six. Yeah, and I'll say we have a man. Pause the recording, but that's okay. All right, um, assign six breakout groups um, automatically. automatically. And I'll say go. All right, so I'm going to open all the rooms, and everybody should have been invited to join one. Sweet. See you guys in one. Accept that invitation. Putting in an R package. And I think this really summarizes one of the main reasons why we want to build an R package. And it's in a way to kind of safeguard your future self, keep things kind of organized and putting it in a package makes it very easy to share with your colleagues or someone else, or you can host it on GitHub and just share with whoever wants to download it from GitHub or if you put it on CRAN. But some other great reasons to learn how to put uh, Build an R package, I think, as these last two things. Improving your coding and function writing skills. I didn't realize, you know, what it is, how, how to write a function that is really intuitive until I had to go and dig through someone's package and be like, oh, yeah, they wrote it that way. And it kind of forces you to learn how to abstract write your functions. And this final point I wanna kind of emphasize at Open Store to contributing to our package, to other packages is that the moment you start building, you start digging into other people's GitHub repos and their packages and you look at how they write their documentation or, or you might come across a bug in their code and you lodge an issue. And that issue is really important for package maintainers because that becomes potentially a new feature they might release. And that's because you took the time to go through their code and to lodge an issue. So by writing an R package, not only it orientates you to all the different files or R package structures, but it also allows you to be like, oh, I think there's something wrong here. And then, and then potentially make a contribution back to these kind of open source tools that we create. 
So now I kind of want to talk about the Maison Place. If you're a Master Chef kitchen, uh, Master Chef fan, they always just talk about Maison Place, which is kind of like all the tools that you might need and the ingredients for, for your cook. So I do all my R package building in our studio. And the two main, these are kind of the core packages that you need. I'd like to kind of, the main two are dev tools and use this. And this is kind of like, the bare bones of your packages. And if you want to do extra things like putting in tests and have really nice documentation, hex stickers, and even a really nice fancy website, these are the other packages that you might want to use. And if you are you know, starting to use Git or use Git regularly, I really encourage you to host your future R package on GitHub. Not only it provides a really nice place for your um, our package to li uh, live and it's easy for people to download and it provides version control, but you can start using and unlocking some of these different functions GitHub provide, GitHub pages, which hosts your website as well as GitHub actions for, for kind of continuous integration or it automates a lot of the R package building for you. Unfortunately, I won't be talking about any of these fancy stuff. We're just gonna be building the bare basics of a package so this is what we're going to be doing tonight. And we'll be building a Whaley, which I specifically wrote um, for this workshop because I thought if we're going to build a package, I thought it would be really fun to build something really silly. And so a Whaley just spits out whale related puns in your console. And, and it allows you to kind of customize what message to put in. So that's what we'll be doing today. We're kind of, we'll go through, create a skeleton for an R package, add a license, add a function, document it, create a readme, add a vignette and a test. And that would be, for me, I think that's like a, the bare basics of a very functional, robust R package. So let's get started. Um, let me not save this. So how can I do this? So every, all the materials are in this GitHub repo. So it says most, so feel free to git clone this. Alternatively, I have prepared a zip file that you can download. Um, but mostly we'll be working off this kind of main underscore functions um, R markdown file, which I've rendered into this website. So if you click on this, GitHub pages link. It will take you to where most of the code is needed, but my internet's very slow. So you won't, I've already have it preloaded. So let me open up my R studio. Let me minimize this. Can everyone see my R studio? Great, sweet. All right, to initiate your um, R package building, experience, just go ahead. We're gonna use um, dev tools. So if you don't have dev tools installed, quickly do it now. It might take a few minutes, but we're just gonna call dev tools and load it into our library. And we're gonna use um, this function that will create our package. And what you provide in this first argument is the name of your package. And you can change this later after you've created it. It's, it's a bit of a headache, but it's doable. So just be intentional what you want to call your R package. But for the for tonight's purposes, we're going to call it a Whaley. So it's going to spit out a lot of things, but if um, for some people's computer, if you have your R Studio with opened in a directory, for example, like within your Google Drive or your Dropbox, it's going to prompt you to be like, are you sure you want to create your R package at this location because it's within a directory? It might kick up a fuss. So just be intentional. I've certainly do it before where I've created an R package within Dropbox. Um, just so long as you're happy with where your R package will live, it will be okay. So here it's opened, RStudio 
has created a new window and it set the project as the name of my R package. So you'll see a couple of key files here. Um, the, the description file, which we'll edit, is gives us an overview of the, what the R package does and it will be where you specify the package dependencies, whether you want to, um, like what, what functions you want to import from other packages. Uh, R build ignore is just files that is automatically ignored by um, the package building process. So it doesn't get, um, like your R project doesn't get loaded when someone downloads your package and you get ignore file, which we won't really need tonight. Your namespace, we never edit by hand. That's why it's always in a read only format. Um, this namespace controls the functions that you import and export to, to the users. So we will see this change throughout the course of tonight. And it is what controls this is your description file. And finally, your R, R directory or your R folder here. This is the kind of business end of your R package. All your functions or your data goes in there and that gets all exported to the, to the user that eventually downloads it. So what, tonight I won't set up Git for this because it's um, setting up Git in a Zoom workshop is always a real headache, <laughs> but I've provided in the R markdown um, ways to set it up and, um, and give provided you some resources to do that too. But I definitely recommend it. It's always great to use Git. Um, it's good for your coding skills and it's good for version control and particularly great for our package building because of those GitHub features that I discussed earlier. But now let's go ahead and edit this um, description file manually. So the package, what, let's just click on, what does the package do? Oh, provide whale. Entertainment. <laughs> or just put whatever you want. Um, feel free to pop your name in as the author as well. Um, this is just some basic info that R requires whenever you, for example, I don't really need my author in there. Um, for more description. Mail uh, messages. Um, so you'll see here this license bit, it says you've licensed, use MIT license, use GPL license. So we're going to do that. Go ahead and update this license field by going into the console and go use MIT license. So this is the most open and permissible license. So if you use this and declare this license, anyone can copy and use your code for their own projects. Um, if you need... Rookie mistake, I need to re reload all dev tools and test that. That's another package we will need tonight. So let's go use MIT license. If you need more stringent license requirements, um, I suggest you taking a read at this R package book where they kind of go through all the different license levels and you can declare it that way in your description file to your needs. Great. So that function updated our license field to MIT and it's provided this license file at the root of your um, project directory. Um, so now when you're building your R package, you have to routinely do kind of hygiene and sanity checks just to make sure it builds. And so it's very, very simple function that you have to regularly use is this check function. And so it just runs through all the files in here and it tries to build it in this kind of virtual space. And the, at the end, it will tell you what went wrong, if there are any things that went wrong. And because this is dependent on my internet connection. Oh, no, it worked out fine. Um, Ideally, what you want is zero errors, zero warnings, zero notes. That's the goal. But if warnings and notes, if you get one or two of them, it's okay. They provide, this package is really clever. It provides really Googleable error messages or warning messages. And um, some warnings and some messages just, um, you have to kind of let them sit there and, and because there's just no solution for them. But errors are the ones that you really have to deal with. 
So everyone following. So Sorry, Fonte, can you yes. just repeat that last uh, function for, to, for yes. the check? Yes, the check function. Oh, it's literally just check. Yes. <laughs> so, easy enough. Thank you. No worries. I'll just wait for a few people to catch up. Feel free to raise your hand or use the chat. I'm slightly multitasking here and looking at everyone's the participant list. Looks like if you have um, problems, let me know. But I feel like we're okay. Great. So let's write our first function. Um, because O'Whaley uses the pipe and your functions in the future may use the pipe um, to import the pipe from the Magrita package, we just use a very simple uh, function could use pipe. And what this will do is add Magrita and the imports section of our description file. And you'll also see that if you click on namespace, oh no, namespace hasn't updated yet. Um, so the, the great thing about building your package in our studio, it gives you these really helpful prompts. Run DevTools document to update your namespace. So let's go ahead and run document. Document just builds the documentation and updates any files that you, your R package may need. So if you click on the namespace file, you'll see, oh, it's our R package is gonna export the pipe function. And this pipe function is imported from the Magrita package. So when any user downloads your package and loads it into their library, they'll be able to use the pipe as well. This is what all this gibberish means. Cool. So now that we have the power of the pipe, <laughs> let's write our first function. Um, so we just use the function use r and provide the name of the function. In this case, it's called say. Use r, so let's go ahead and run that. We'll create this r, um, r script with the name um, of your function as the name of the file. And it will ask you to put, and this is where you would define your function and place it in. So if you have the main functions R Markdown open or the website that it's rendered in, there's this big long chunk of code that has a whale in it. Go ahead, I'm just copying it. I can no way live code this function for you guys. Go ahead and paste it into your empty say.r function. <laughs> this function is brilliant, thanks, Aris. So once you've pasted it in, um, save it. And in order for us to use this function, we also need um, another function file called phrases, because you'll see here, say there's a whale, um, if what if what isn't supplied. So this function has the argument what, where the user can define something to say, but if what isn't supplied, um, this function just samples a random phrase. So we're just gonna create that phrase file. So like the previous code, we're gonna go use underscore r and go phrases, phrase. <laughs> no, phrases, phrase. <laughs> Oh, no. Nope. Now I have to, yeah, phrases, great. Now we're gonna paste in all the random whale phrases that I came up one afternoon when I was really bored. Feel free to add your own phrases and well, they just have to be whale associated puns. So go ahead and save that. So now we've got two files that we've defined for our, our package. I'll save function and then phrases, which the say function uses. Are we following so far? Could you open your history tab? Oh, that's a great, fantastic, fantastic suggestion. Great. So in order for us to use these functions, now we're gonna use a very uh, simple function called load all. This just loads a preview of your R package without you having to install it each time. Where do we um, where do we copy and paste a whale pick again? So let me try. Yes, from here. Oh, 
No worries. Great. Hey, Fonty. Yes. Um, would you walk us through the whale function and what it actually does? Yeah, sure. Can you I... just talk us through the, the bits of the function and how 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 it prints us whale entity? <laughs> well, okay. I am not the author of this function. So this this package is really heavily inspired from another package called Cow Say. So if you are a coding geek, Cow Say just usually just prints out messages with a cow next to it. Um, but I can try explain the different components of this function. So say requires one argument called what, um, which will, which is a character string. Here, whale um, <laughs> uses these ASCII notations. So this is just defining what the whale looks like. And it's got these new lines in it and this percentage S. And this percentage S is a really important thing for this function, which I'll kind of explain why because percentage S is kind of the center of that speech bubble. And um, here we use some regular expressions to, to determine where, at what character does this percentage S part start? And then I kind of give it some leeway and plus three characters to give it some space for where, where the message will sit. Uh, let me skip this if part. And so if what, if someone puts a character string or a message in what, it basically pace zero will just merge all that well ASCII notation um, as well as the user supplied message into one big long string, um, which I've assigned to an out, uh, an output or an out variable. But if what isn't supplied, um, I, we just sample from the phrases, any random phrases that, and then we assign that to what. So we just replace that emptiness with what. And then we, in order for it to print as a message in our console, we just use the message uh, function to wrap around out. Ah, uh, right. So if, the, if you don't put anything in the say argument, it just draws it random. But yes. if you put something in, then it will put one of those random phrases with what you say and mush it together. Um, or, or it just puts what you say. Yeah. If you've without put a phrase. something in what, it will put what, what you've said. <laughs> this is getting really confusing to talk about. But if say is empty, it will draw randomly. Got it. Okay, cool. Thank yeah, you. This is also inspired from praise, the Our Ladies kind of package for yeah. praising people. Yeah. yeah, you can go say something. Exactly, fan. So let's use load all. That will load a preview of our package. Leveling old lady. So go ahead and type say in your console. You will get a whale. I guarantee it. But let me let me know if you don't get a whale. We can troubleshoot. Is anyone getting a whale? You can spam say many, many times. <laughs> Is your whale working? I don't see any hands up, so I, I'm taking this as a good sign. <laughs> Great. Um, so within the R markdown, I've also placed in tips and extra. I won't spend any time actually discussing them per se. It's um, it's for it's more kind of giving your R packages. Um, like if you want to use more advanced functions, like writing your functions like the tidyverse where you don't have to put your variable names in quotes or something like that, those kind of functions. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm just reading the chat. Um, phrases. Anna, if you try, yeah, if you try load all, I think you'll, you'll be able to use say. Elif, that's a trickier, trickier one. I'm not entirely sure about Elif's error, but it's, oh, try load underscore all. Hmm. 
it's all right if it's not working. We can try troubleshoot it after so we can move the group forward. I think that might be great. All right, I'll move on. Great, now that we have um, our first function, we now have to document it. And to document it, um, and why we have to document our function, you don't have to necessarily if it's like an R package you're using yourself, but just to safeguard your future self and you're like, oh, I forgot what say you, um, how it works, or you're trying to send your R package to someone else and you don't really want to help them. They can rely on your documentation or the help files that you create um, to get started um, a lot quicker. So um, we're going to be using the Roxygen2 package to document this function. And oh, let me just close some of these files. We don't need phrases again. So to document, there's two ways to document your functions. The first way, well, I've provided you code to just quickly copy and paste <laughs> into above your function. So these, this chunk here, this um, hashtag with an apostrophe, these are just the Roxygen formatting that they use in order for R to read this and render a really beautiful help file. Um, another way you can do this, let me just delete this first, is to put your cursor within your function. So within, in between your curly braces and hit code and go insert Roxygen skeleton. That will provide you that same template as well, but it's empty and it hasn't been populated by, by anything. So I wanna quickly talk about this at param, these at things, what are these at things? These are the Roxygen tags at param is for um, defining, telling the user what the say function, like the different arguments in the say function. So we only have what in our say function. So you can provide a bit more of a definition, you know, a character string message. <laughs> if you have more time, you probably write this more beautifully. Oh, the title is really important. This is the title of your function. Um, I, I think I typed in something silly like summon, summon a whale for a customizable pick me up, but you can put whatever you, this is the title of your function, but I believe um, this is really important um, when someone wants to look up your function. And so you want to make this a very declarative uh, title. Um, I think in my template, I have also at usage. So usage is kind of just like, how do you, it's kind of like use the function in a sentence or like write, reuse this word in a sentence. You just kind of write out your, song, uh, your function so the user knows how to, you know, call it in their console. Return is what the, function returns back to the user. Sometimes it's a plot, sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's, you know, a message. How is usage different to examples? I think examples can be, that's a really good question. Examples is where you actually put um, different versions of your, of your like function in, in use. <laughs> it's like you, you can put like, um, anything in there so that the user understands what your function is doing. Um, world is a really common one. Whereas usage is just like kind of syntactically, what does your function, how does your function read? Uh, so uh, let me come back to return. Um, when I did, I didn't get you. So no, not all of these are Roxygen tags. Are, completely necessary. I think the skeleton when, that you insert are the bare, is the bare minimum, but if you want to provide extensive documentation, um, which I think my template kind of went a bit overboard with, it's, um, you can use all these different other tags. So if you go at and then tab complete, there's all these different tabs, tags that you can use, um, but those are the basic ones that um, are good to use. 
export is the one that you want to use if you want to export this function to the user. So if someone calls library, can data will say be exported um, with the package. If you have functions that are just like internal, um, that kind of utilities based functions, you just remove this tag, then it becomes instantly an internal function. But in this case, we want everyone to use the say function. So we've kind of done a quick documentation um, for the say function. So in order for us to kind of have create our help file, we're going to go into console and use this function quick document. This is also kind of one of those functions that you'll use over and over again as you write and develop your R package. Document goes through um, all your files and looks kind of for these tags and then builds the help files. So go ahead now, now that if you've ran document, um, you can now call the help file for say. So it should render in your help viewer. Ta-da! And that's how they build help files. And so if you need inspiration in writing a good help file, I do suggest say find like a, a tidy verse, like mutate would be a great one. If, I don't know if I can find it. Mutate for D player. Oh, wow, there's a lot of mutate. Oh no, <laughs> there we go. You get the idea, that's how I mean. <laughs> you get an idea of how people are writing it. And you can use like at value would give you, um, oh no, return. That's where you put return. Um, and you can put references and see also is also in here. How do I insert these? Oh. So to repeat, how do you insert the Roxygen template? Let me just delete this one. You put your cursor just somewhere in the function, just so long as it's within the, the, the curly braces, um, then it will detect kind of what arguments are in there. Then you go into code, go to insert Roxygen skeleton. And then, then boom, it will detect that it has what in the function and it will just automate this at param what. Great, cool. Um, let me move on. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? Great. The next thing our package needs is a readme file. Um, and the readme, the purpose of a readme file is just to very provide a very quick overview of what your R package does. And if you're using GitHub and your uh, package is hosted on GitHub, it will render that, you know, when you go to a repo, it's, it's that very first thing a user will, lead, um, will read. And so it's a really kind of the space where you want to provide really important information and how to install your package um, and like where to lodge bugs or how to contribute the package. This is kind of where um, you want to put that information. The readme file. So like most of the functions we've been using, we're going to go use underscore readme. And there's two versions. There's readme underscore md, which represents markdown, or readme underscore r markdown. So if your readme has no r code in it for some reason, you can just use the basic version. But because we're going to be putting some quick demo of our package and telling people how to install um, the package, um, it's like a safe bet to use the, the R Markdown version. So go ahead and run that. So that will create, uh, let me go back to our directory, this readme file in here, and it will automatically open it for you, for you to edit. And it's telling you to, to modify it. So I've provided, in my GitHub or in the zip file that I've shared for everyone to download. Um, let me just navigate to my repo so you can see. Can you guys see my the GitHub repo right now? Great. Um, if you haven't downloaded or cloned or have access, if you have access to this repo, I've provided this kind of folder called templates 
we're just going to go into example underscore readme dot rmd. And we're just going to copy all of this and paste it into our empty readme. This is just formatted so that um, you can see that it, it tells the user how to install um, O'Whaley and it provides a quick demo of O'Whaley. So I'm just going to copy this contents and replace it with the readme that's in here and save it. Great. And you'll see before we knit this for a preview, because O'Whaley is called here, we just need to quickly install the current version of our package. So we're going to use this install function that installs what we've already built locally. So go ahead and install our package. So it's just going to build a temporary file and save it on your computer. It shouldn't complain if so far we've documented everything. And so now we can knit this for a preview. Ta-da! I hope this works for you guys. So it's kind of printed out everything. This will be on the GitHub if you're using on using GitHub. I think if I click on this. Great. How's everyone tracking so far? We okay? Maybe I'll repeat that. What we've done so far is use the use readme R rmd function and that created a readme uh, markdown file for us and i've told everyone to jump on my github to copy ha <laughs> yay it's working for some of the people yay um on my github to download the example readme that i've provided on the github and we've paste it into our own readme. And we've used the install function to install what we've built so far on our computers and we've just knitted our readme for a preview. Are we all tracking so far? I think so, great. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, so this readme will, will knit a markdown file. So um, if you're using Git, you can add both of these files and push it to your repo. And this is what the GitHub will read this markdown file to render it onto that kind of nicely on your GitHub repo. Um, great. Now let's move on to long form documentation, which is a big boring word for, for writing vignettes. So many kind of really, in my, in my eyes, really good packages have really, um, well-documented tutorials or background information uh, or case studies or worked examples in their vignettes. Um, and that really helps the user to read and go through the material and learn how to use the package themselves. So writing, writing good vignettes and extensive vignettes, I think, is a really good skill to do when you're developing your own R package. So to write, to, to write your own vignette, we're going to use the use vignette uh, function. And I think if you leave the argument empty, actually, it's just going to name it after your package. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Oh, no, it's, it's going to, it wants a name. So I'm just going to give it the name of your, of the package. But you can have multiple vignettes. You can have one that's like a vignette tutorial one or vignette, um, you know, contributing guidelines, you know, the, the options are kind of completely up to you. So this function <laughs> did a lot of things in the background. It's added knit R to our description file. So now we have um, suggests our markdown knit R. Um, it's set, set our vignette builder as knit R. It's created a lot of different directories. So if I head over to my files, um, oh no, it hasn't created that many directories yet. It's created a vignette directory and added things to our ignore files. Great. So now let's head over to the O'Reilly.rmd and 
Similar to the README, I've provided a template on GitHub or in all the workshop materials. So I'm gonna go ahead and try find it and try copy and paste it in there. So I'm gonna go into example underscore vignette. If it loads, I should have preloaded this. But for the purpose of this workshop, it's just a repeat of our README. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of this and replace it with what's in this empty RMD file. And you can save this and go ahead and knit it for a preview if you would like. So it looks like it's, <laughs> well, 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 look who's here. Yay. So we've written our first vignette. In order for it to be accessible though, we need to accessible to the user and to you and for us to look it up in the um, help window, we have to use this function called build vignettes. While I've tried, I've tested this workshop a few times. I'm not sure why this sometimes work, works for people, this sometimes doesn't work. So just try it on your end. And if you have any troubles, let me know. So what build vignette does is go through our vignettes folder and look at our RMD and it does, it kind of, it renders O'Reilly RMD into the, into an HTML as well as this R file. That's what this build vignettes does. So I'm just gonna use the document type function to document and update the namespace for this package. Now I'm gonna try find O'Reilly the vignette. So we're gonna use the vignette function and we'll type in the package name. Yeah, so it's worked for me, but let me know if it doesn't work on your end. I've tested this workshop on a few computers and that's the workflow. <laughs> is anyone, is everyone pulling up their vignette? Seems. Great, one thumbs up. Another way to browse your vignette or look at your vignette is to use the browse vignettes um, function. Just note that it has a capital V. So if you're live coding this along with me to update that capital V. So the difference between vignette and browse vignette is vignette pulls it up into your help window. Browse vignette opens it in your browser. So let me pull this up. Oop. So it gives you, it provides an HTML, the R code. So this is that folder that we saw in docs that it's rendered our, our HTML, the R code. Yeah. Wow, I am so surprised that this is working for everyone so far. I am amazed. Well, team, mine, mine says it can't find the function vignette. How do I oh. do And did oh. you do document first? Maybe I didn't. Can you open your history? For, oh, your history is open. Here we go. I have to do. Build. Oh, maybe I might be several steps back. Just build vignettes first. Build vignettes, yeah. Try this. And then that's thinking. Yeah, build vignettes takes a while. It's kind of. Gone. I think that might have been the step that I missed. Ah, that's okay. We'll wait for you. This is really handy, this history function. All right, so build vignettes and then document. Yeah. I don't think document is necessary, but a few trials of this workshop on different computers, yeah. sometimes it's required. Sometimes so just for safe measures. Our, our coders, we just get a bit superstitious about, um, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. Vignette, Whaley. Yes. All right. Sorry. Yes. I just. I missed that critical step. Thank you. No, that's okay. I'm so glad you can get your own vignette on your computer. Yay! Um, well, okay, can I ask a question? So what kinds of things are kind of README located versus vignette located? What it, how do we like parse those things? Yeah, there's no clear line. Um, often actually vignettes 
is a bit redundant to your readme, but um, vignettes will contain more like ex explaining what the function does or explaining if it's a modeling function, how it models certain things and then provide like a worked example with some, with some um, data that's included in the package. So um, yeah. It's a little more tutorial based than just this is what it does. Yeah, the vignette for DeepRL is it. really good. Um, it really walks you step by step. So one tip that the R Packages book written by Heather Wickham and Jenny Bryan, <laughs> they recommend like writing your vignettes with like a really strong beginner's mindset, just really yeah. explaining, oh, say has one argument called what, and it is, you know, it, it has to be, it can be a character string or a vector, a numeric vector. Yeah. Ooh, also the vignette can be accessed from the R Studio. Some people won't know how to go. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. Vignettes can be accessed through here. But often when you Google an R package name, GitHub, the GitHub repo where it lives is all the, the vignettes that Cran creates is generally the first few things that pops up so people can find how quickly. Yeah. Great, we're almost there folks. We're doing good for time actually. Now I want to talk a little bit about tests. Um, so our packages have these tests in the background to make sure it's doing the right thing so that the users can use it problem free. And it's a very vital part of package development. Well, it's not completely necessary for you to write tests for your own personal packages. Um, it's really good practice to include them. Uh, some people view writing tests as, um, as something tedious, but um, try see it as a game and I kind of will show you why it's a bit of a game because the, the package writers for, the, for writing tests have included emojis and they've kind of made things green. So, so you kind of get that kind of little boost of do dopamine as you're coding. So to use tests, we require a package called test that. Yeah, these are all very declarative packages and functions. <laughs> so to use test that, we're gonna use the use test that function. <laughs> so go ahead and type that into your console. And what that does is create a test directory inside your R package. And it's also updated your description file, as you can see in the suggests field. Great, so now we're gonna write our first test for the say function. And as it suggests here, we're gonna use the use test function. And we're gonna put in the name of the function that we want to write a test for. In this case, it's the say function. So this creates within the test directory, um, it creates a test that folder and it creates an R script with the suffix test hyphen, and then it ends with the function name. So you'll also notice this, if you go up one level, there's this test that dot R. This we don't really edit. It's just that this automates the testing process. So when you test your package, it will load test that, it will load the our package or Whaley, and it will just go test check our package name. But we don't really need to worry about this R script per se. We're just going to go into and edit this test say uh, script. So it's provided you a bit of a template. So let me just walk you through all the bits and pieces here. So a test script um, comes in this format. It has to test that and some sort of character string. This is just where you describe what the test is doing. So here it says Multipli multiplication works. And it's got, um, it opens the function for you to define your tests. And tests are arranged in these things called expectations. So there's lots of different expectations. So if I go expect underscore tab, oops. It's gonna give you a big drop down list. Ooh, it should expect underscore. It gives you all these different various expectations that you could use. So in this case, expect equal, the first argument of this expectation is um, what, you're what you're trying to test. 
oh no, this is the, <laughs> the actual thing, the answer, if you will. And the second argument is the expectation. So I don't think this is exactly the best example. <laughs> um, um, so it's saying the, in reality, two times two, what do we expect is it, it to equal to? So the answer is here is four. So we expect it to equal to four. But I think what might be a better example is the, the, the test script that I've provided you. So let me just copy and paste that in here. Yeah, I've given you a bit of a, a template here to test say, give a quick description of the test and use the expect functions. And the first argument is the actual thing that you want to test, which usually is your function and the expectation, what you expect that function to spit out. So here I've provided for this testing unit, um, I'm testing that the output of this function is correct or in a correct format. So I'm using various expectations, expect length. So say I don't expect it to, when you run say, I don't, ex it's gonna spit out something with a length of zero because when you, it doesn't, it, there's no output returned for say. So I've pres my expectation is zero. Um, expect underscore null. So I expect set here, we don't have two arguments, but we expect say to return nothing. So there are some, some expectations that doesn't require the two arguments. I expect say to return invisibly. So it doesn't really, it doesn't change my environment in R. It doesn't create a plot or anything. It just kind of, um, kind of returns invisibly. And I expect it to, re to um, return a message. So we use expect underscore message. Sorry, I'm just reading through the chat now. Um, can't use test that function not found. Yeah. yeah. Mine did that as well and just wanted me to use test say and not say use test that at all. Oh. It got upset. It got upset. Um, were you able to create, were, were that function, was it able to create this test directory, Jade? Yeah, so use test say created the directory and did everything because I accidentally didn't type use test that and then when I tried to, it didn't like it. Oh, yeah, the order of operations here is, I guess, somewhat important, but because you got you you typed in use this test say it's just going like oh well that that means you probably will need to use test that so it's just added the function uh, the package to your dependencies there yeah that's okay use test that is from use this Oops. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel tense. use test that test use this is a really fan uh, really helpful package for package writing. Use test that, but you don't necessarily need the step as Jade was saying, you could just jump to use underscore test and automatically it will assume that you're using, it defaults to using test that. There are other testing packages, but test that is the most standard one to use. Okay, cool. Is you expect, like, expecting that the output is length? is not zero what do you mean sorry, Jenny? sorry I think my <laughs> typing my typing is um inaccurate so that it's actually ununderstandable um your expect length say zero is that expecting that it is zero or isn't zero uh, i am expecting it zero it's all um if i type say what what am i going to get it's always what i expect it to be but you're going to get a whale who says something. What's that? that you're, when, when you type say, you're going to get a whale that says something. Mm. Is that just, you, it, is what that means? You're, you're not going to get a vector of length something. You're, you're going to get a whale who says something. Is, yeah. is that what that means? Oh, I see, I see what you mean. <laughs> because say is just the message that's printed in your console, it doesn't create... Like there's nothing, there's, it doesn't attach itself in a variable that then has a length of one. It just, it's just, 
like a, a cloud passing through the sky. It's just there and then it kind of disappears. Right, right. So it's not creating an object that sticks around. Yeah, my environment that has a lens. is still very yeah. much empty. Yeah. Right. So writing tests requires kind of like a bit of an abstract forethinking, what do I expect? And kind of it re- requires some weird creativity that I'm still trying to develop. But um, the more expectations you apparently the more expectations you put for something the more robust because it's passing all these tests so now let's officially run um our tests so there's two ways to run your tests you can um just write the test function in your console and it's going to spit through and run run each of those expectations and tell you whether it's failed or it's generated a warning or it's passed, which in this case is passed for and it's green. We like green <laughs> in R at least. Um, alternatively, you can just run this chunk of code. And I like doing it this way because it gives you this emoji at the end and you feel really good about yourself afterwards. <laughs> so, cause it's telling you test passed. Yeah. How, oh, I just read Fan's um, question. How many expect functions are needed? As many as you would like. Generally, we group that test within that test that function um, related tests. Like um, I wouldn't, we're just testing very one specific function, one specific aspect of that function. Because O'Whaley is so simple, I feel like there's only one one thing that we can really test is that, and then that's its, its output. But if you have more complicated functions, you can test whether the output is has the right dimensions that you're expecting, or if you it's a plotting function, you can test whether the labels of your plot is what you've set it as default, or whether, yeah. And uh, does that make sorry, sense? sorry, Fonty. <clears throat> it seems like are your tests only going to be as good as your expectations of the function then? Like you have to really have a thorough understanding of what, what you expect. Yeah, uh, that is that is what I struggle with in that you make a really good point there. Um, if you don't put very many or you, or yeah, I think you've put it as, put it as well as I could possibly say it, that, um, that your expectations uh, are defined by you so your tests are going to be as good as as how what you defined um yeah I don't really know I have much to say about that so Fonty is this kind of just like a sanity check for yourself to make sure it's doing everything that you think it's mm, doing? yeah some people when they think about testers they normally just write a function and they're like okay well what if I give say you know, a vector instead, like, will that work? Um, Let me just go seek one to 10. Like, will that work? Um, Like, oh, okay. It's actually spit out, you know, uh, across the vector instead of a string of of letters. Like, I guess some, most people do the testing as they're writing the function. Here, we're trying to, we're trying to formalize that process um, and put it in the test script. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So it's not just to check that the function actually works, but to see how it behaves and and what it will be, how it will be used potentially. Yes, absolutely. So if your function has some complicated input, say a data frame or certain variables, you within your tests you can alter. Um, the, you know, you, you can, you might expect certain classes that will work with your function and certain classes that may not necessarily work. Great. Yeah. The okay. testing part is probably the, the trickiest part of, of our package development for sure. Yeah. I'm wondering if you have tips for those of us who feel like we have not that much intuition about what to expect, um, <laughs> our functions to do. I feel like I'm in that boat. <laughs> I mean, how do, how, do, how do you develop that creative intuition about expectations around your function? I guess, I guess for, for, for packages 
that are on GitHub and are open. In theory, you could go and dig into other people's test files yes. and steal their expectations, right? Yes, yes, 100%. And that is definitely is, something I've done. Is that what you do? Nice. Yes, absolutely. And I also kind of do it in a backwards way. I kind of go through this like list of like expectations. I'm like, could huh, I expect what that can I in use? Theory? And then I'm like, okay, then this is what I will put in my expectation. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but I think going to other people's um, repos is a really great idea of, of testing as well. I'm no expert with testing and still very much learning. Yeah, great. Well, um, I'm afraid, folks, this is this is it. You have your own R package. It's it's that easy. <laughs> um, you can now try install it. We've already done it locally, but we don't have the vignettes built, so you can try install your package with. And as well as the vignettes with this argument, build vignettes equals true. And then you'll have a copy of O'Waley that you writ yourself on your computer. And if you've, um, oh no, I don't want to do any of that. None. <laughs> um, if you've hosted your package on GitHub, you can then try it. You can use dev tools, install underscore GitHub as well. Yeah. Are there any questions so far? I have a question, Monty. Hey, Dex. Hey, um, I was wondering, is it better to, when you're testing, to have lots of expect underscore functions or is it better to like build with some vectors, like say you expect a data frame to like try to build it yourself and then say expect equal that data frame? And you built it yourself. Oof, I don't think I have a formal opinion about it. Maybe Saras can jump in. Is she still in the in the meeting? Saras, she's also I'm here. here. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I, I definitely do. People do that, so you can run the function once, and if it's supposed to produce something like a data frame, you can save that object. So, in front of the test app, in that script you can run other code. I mean, I'm no expert either. I still hate doing this and avoid it, even though I should do it more. But you can run a bunch of stuff or create something fake there, like a random data frame with fake values. And then you can say, expect my function of these things to equal that other thing I just made above here. Yeah, I don't know if this is working, gonna work. Sure, uh, yeah, expect a message. Um, surely that will yeah <laughs> you can just feed it with different things cool yeah i mean there is more material inside i was just wary of time there's more material in this r markdown for example if you keep scrolling down there's like extra including data in your package and i've, I've provided code for that but i am wary that this is after hours and people might be hungry and want to relax so I've tried to be as thorough in this R markdown. So I hope if you want to, we can we can go through it another time. Or, but I definitely encourage you to do it. Great. Awesome. That was so great, Monty, and so fun. Um, yeah, oh. it really was a great idea. I love it. Love it. Oh. Thank you so much for agreeing to walk us through the basics. I feel like I am have a much better mental model for what a package is under the hood and a much better appreciation for the use this package like I on Twitter people rave about use this all the time and I'm like oh yeah whatever I'll use this but like it feels like you wouldn't ever develop a package without it right yeah thank you so so much um I we are planning sadly again online events for the for the next few months so to wrap up today we started the um night with a list of everybody's favorite packages at the top um can we finish the night with everybody putting a suggestion for a package they would like to learn more about mm -hmm. right so a package that you've heard about 
um, that you think, oh, I really should learn X. Can everybody put in the chat um, a package that you would like to learn about that you think might be useful to your work that you um, have heard other people rave about but haven't got around to learning? And we may be able to find someone to um, <laughs> teach you easy. All right. Well, maybe Jenny Sloan can put her hand up to teach us teach you easy. Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody. This was super, super fun. And um, we will see you all next time for um, the next online Our Lady Sydney again. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Tidy models. I want to learn tidy models. Feels like a big thing to big thing to bite off. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't even know what it is, but it sounds cool. Yeah, I feel like there's lots of Twitter chat about tidy models. Yeah. And there are seems to be more and more great Twitter people jumping on the R Studio Tidy mm -hmm. Models team. That makes me feel like our studio is really investing in it, um, which is probably because it's really, really good. But I haven't really had a chance to, you know. Um, I save my history file. Do I, is it just, do I just control A? Oh, okay. Hmm. I might just copy. Oh, no. Let me, I will Google this before I close my R. There's okay. apparently a save history function. I just Googled it also. There oh. we go. Do I type that into console? Oh, wow. Save history function. Save our history. Ah, that is cool. Do you not yet use the hair package, Fonty? I, I've heard you raved about it a long time ago, but I'm, I don't use it myself. Oh, my goodness. I've and seen... Jennifer. Okay. Same. I, I I sort of heard about it maybe once or twice. Oh, oh really? Oh my goodness. I feel like it's it's like file paths for dummies. But, but isn't that what the art project does? Kind of, except I ran into problems when I was first um learning because markdowns and markdown documents and scripts have different defaults for how they deal with file paths. Mm -hmm. And here kind of makes you use a standard format to get so that R always knows where your stuff lives. Oh, and is it like traveling between Linux and Mac and Yeah, yeah. So it's it's always referring to things in terms of relative to the top level of your project. Mm. Um, whereas the markdown default is the whatever folder your markdown lives in. So yes, I hate that. Right? Right? <laughs> whereas scripts, our script, the default is the top level of your project. And so as a beginner, I was like loving our markdown. And, but feeling like I was being super organized by putting my markdown scripts in a scripts folder and my data in a data folder and then running into like my script for my, my R markdown would find my data. What is, yeah. And so the here, it allows you to refer to everything relative to the top level of your project in a way that doesn't rely on the like forward slashes on a, I don't even remember which way it goes, forward slashes on a PC and backslashes on a Mac or like, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so brilliant because I was talking to my student yesterday and she had her scripts in a folder, but then <laughs> moving them is really awkward. And the yeah. only suggestion I gave her was to knit to like one of the options with knitting or rendering is like, uh, I don't remember the, one of the, one of the arguments is like render from, uh, from which folder to render. I, I don't remember now. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Better. Yeah. Um, it, it is, it's great. It's very, really, really good. Oh, thanks for coming, so guys. Fun. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thanks, Jenny. So thanks, good. It's so good. I can't believe how much you got through in the time. I know. That was Including impressive. Tests. Tests, even. I was yes, like, but it so wasn't nice. overwhelming. <laughs> anyway, have a good evening, you guys. Well done, Fonty. Bye. I really Thank like you. how calm and enthusiastic you are. Oh, you. Thanks, totally. Yeah. So good.
Oh. See you. Bye. Bye.